Hey everybody, this week's episode of the Rattle Recap is brought to you by Natural Selection, which is a new party game that's going to be crowdfunding soon. And the basic idea is every round a card is drawn that has the name of a real world animal species that is something you've never heard of some wacky weird name and what everybody does is they play two cards from their hands that will create a new animal species showing the front and the rear and these are going to be some very strange looking animals indeed that you can mix and match uh, to get really unique looks especially when you throw in some of the expansions that have art from other artists anyway after everybody's designed their own perfect species that will fulfill the name of the real world animal, players take turns comedically describing what it is they've discovered, and they are judged, and whoever comes up with the most entertaining animal wins the point. It looks like a lot of silly fun for your next party get-together with uh, some very interesting um, scratching of creative visual muscles. And if you'd like to know more about it, there's a link down in the show notes below. And uh, let's get going. And hello folks, here we are on a completely unnamed beach. We're about an hour south of San Felipe in Baja. We're continuing to head north uh, by this time next week. We might be back in the U.S., depending on how timing works. And uh, it's just lovely. As you can see, uh, the sun is rising. The... Uh, cliff up there we're parked you can't quite see us but the dogs are frolicking jen is searching for shells and i'm gonna tell you three things all the new videos that went up on the channel over the last week the videos that went up on other people's channels that i think are worth checking out and new games i've added to my wish list on board game geek because they sound awesome right Let's get to it. Uh, starting with uh, an exclusive, if you are a backer of the show here on YouTube as a member or over at Patreon, I put up my monthly February ramble and it was an in-depth tour of our RV. I spent the first 20 minutes or so talking about how I film on the road, what equipment and all that. And then I spent like another almost hour just opening up every nook and cranny of the RV. What's in every drawer? What's our storage solution? And all kinds of stuff. And uh, oh, power. Talked a lot about power and internet and all of it, and uh, it's available as an exclusive as a thank you for folks who help keep Rotto running. Uh, and there goes Daisy in full scamper mode. Okay, now. Let's talk about what went up on the channel for everybody. First of all, I did a run through of Crossing Oceans. Uh, maybe Matt Gert's greatest design ever. I do think it is an improvement over his uh, previous uh, foray into the subject matter, Transatlantic. This is basically Transatlantic 2, and it is so nice. Such a huge improvement over Transatlantic with one I think mistake made in the design. One thing that keeps it from perfection, sadly, and probably something that's very easy to house rule. I talk about that in my final thoughts for Crossing Oceans. And I also did a run through for Seasons of Rice, a, uh, an older game from Button Shy. It came out in 2019 originally. It's been out of print for a while, but good news, everybody. I believe next week uh, it's going to be available in a new Button Shy crowdfunding campaign. So my run through showing off this excellent, fantastic two-player card drafting tile laying game is uh, going to help you decide whether it is worth backing it uh, now that it's available again. I've got a couple of rapid reviews. One for Arcana Rising, which, man, every time I play this game, folks, I love it more. Uh, is it ultimately going to eclipse Seven Wonders for me? I suppose. I suppose anything's possible. It's a very sharp fast playing card drafting game that works just as well as a solo game or a two player game all the way up to six um, and if you want to know more about it hey i spend a few minutes talking about it in a uh, rapid review and then i also have a rapid review for al pujaris which uh, is the latest design from steve finn maybe his biggest most complex game to date even though it's still a very fast time track game and it has so much packed into a tight little fast playing game in a small box. I mean, heck, this one could have been published by Devere. It feels kind of like that vibe. And then finally, oh, we had a new r and r, &R show uh, where we did top 10 games for couples because it was Valentine's Day week, of course. And we had Raina from Pandasaurus and One Minute Board Game join us. And I promise, folks, there were a lot of games for couples lists this week. I saw a bunch of them on channels, but none of the lists feature some of the games we talked about. It was 
really quite full of surprises. And uh, then uh, last but not least, I've got another Rado Q&A, number 22. There were some very big topics hit uh, this week. I am, geez, I think it almost went 40 minutes long. Uh, but as always, folks, you can just skip around. Start watching. If you don't like the question I'm talking about, jump ahead to the next one, the next one. Jen joins me for a bunch as well. <clears throat> I feel like there were at least two dozen board game dilemmas that were put to me. Like, would I rather have X or Y if I could only have one? Really fun stuff, uh, very enjoyable Q&A. Then we've got other people's channels, folks. First of all, Tabletop Toki did a top 10 underrated two-player games. This was her um, video for Valentine's Day. And um, next to the r and show, I think this was the best one because when she says underrated, she is not kidding. She had a bunch of games that I think are are criminally overlooked. Some of them I've enjoyed quite a bit, some I haven't played but now want to, and it was an excellent top 10 list, one of the best I've seen recently. Uh, um, let's see. Then, oh man, Above Board TV. I don't know if you know about this channel, folks. It's basically a board game um, uh, comedy channel, and they did a D20 meet cute video. This is a, basically a little short uh, talking about Dungeons and Dragons fans' romantic comedy style, and uh, it stars Shay, you know, you know Shay of, of the uh, channel, and he was very fun to watch. Uh, and it, it really struck me that it was inspired by one of those Pixar Disney animated shorts. So much so that when I, I wasn't surprised when I looked at the uh, show notes for it, they said, "Yeah, we were inspired by this one particular short," and it was sweet and charming and very well produced and quick too. Uh, another nice Valentine's Day present. Then, oh, uh, uh, was it Schooled by Gru? Uh, this is uh, Dr. Tanya uh, Pabuda. Uh, she is a PhD candidate. I, maybe she's already gotten it by now. But anyway, for the last year or so, she has been putting dissertation research for her um, PhD on the uh, show from Our Family Plays Games, Voices. And she's always been my favorite part of Voices. Um, now, I was surprised to see she's taken all of those individual, you know, three to five minute long, very well searched topics about all kinds of stuff, you know, academically researched topics, and she's turned them into a whole bunch of standalone videos on her channel. I put a link for or the first one down in the show notes, but folks, if you've got an hour, I suggest watching them all. They're very smart. I mean, again, this is academic research about board games done uh, with a very cool animated style. I mean, uh, she really goes goes above and beyond. They've been great on Voices for Our Family Plays Game, and uh, but if you don't have time for the whole show, you can just catch them directly. Uh, next up, oh, Jeremy Howard, the great Jeremy Howard of Man vs. Meeple did a video for Imperium Horizons, a review, and I gotta say, one of the things I love about Jeremy, the way he does his reviews is, before he puts it up, he goes on Board Game Geek and posts a thread saying, hey, does anybody have any questions about this game? And so, uh, you know, and then he gets a bunch and he includes that stuff in his reviews, which makes his reviews, I think, really stand out from everybody else's. He ends up talking about uh, elements of the game in his reviews that other channels, myself included, tend not to touch. And I've always thought it was brilliant of him to do this. And so anyway, he's now done it for Imperium Horizon, which was my number one most anticipated game for 2024. And uh, he did a great job pointing out things that you just won't hear about this new hot game from other channels, thanks to the denizens of Board Game Geek, who basically gave him questions to answer. Smart, smart man, smart, smart video for a smart, smart game. And then finally, oh, Ambie. Um, she did, uh, she uh, celebrated her 10th year on YouTube with a fun little video. Honestly, I don't want to spoil the surprise. It was charming as all get out, even if it was kind of a little uh, hastily thrown together kind of ad hoc. But hey, that speaks to me because that's like the very nature of my channel. And uh, I, I just, just smiling ear to ear. Uh, that's my video of the week. I definitely go recommend her celebrating her 10th anniversary on YouTube. Okay. Finally, folks, let's talk about some new games you can uh, learn about on Board Game Geek. If you go to the pages that are linked down below and you can add them to your uh, wish list like I've done, you can subscribe to them so as more information comes to light. Yo, know, that's, that's what this part of the show is for. Anyway, I think I've got five games. First of all, of course, I would not be able to do this show without talking about Earth Abundance. We all knew it was coming, folks. It was like the 
one of the most popular, most highly ranked, maybe the most highly ranked game of last year. Uh, is my number one game of the year. So many channels agreed. And it's getting its first expansion. Not much information so far. Uh, basically, it's going to be crowdfunding, apparently, um, in late April. Um, it features more interaction between players, kind of paying attention to what your neighbors are doing and stuff like that. Maybe seven wondersy. Who knows? Again, there's not much information, just the promise of more player interaction and more hand management. Because if you've ever played Earth, you might have been in a situation where you've got maybe upwards of 15, 20 cards in your hand and you don't know what to do with them all. Well, they've got new stuff you can use those cards for. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what have I got next? Oh, Knights of the Round Table. Now, I'm excited for this because it's from designer Johnny Pack. You know, uh, Mr. Coloma, uh, Sierra West, uh, Fistful of Meeples. He made such a huge splash a few years ago with his first designs. And since then, he's mostly been um, being a developer, co-designer on a lot of other people's games. And so I've been waiting and waiting. Hey, where's the new Johnny Pack game you know, that he designed? And that's what Knights of the Round Table is going to be. I'm very, very excited for this. Uh, the description on Board Game Geek promises really cool deluxe components, lots of silkscreen meeples and 3D elements on the board. It's got a very, very cool theme, nights around the table and all that, with lots of modules that unlocks to take the game in different directions every session. My only worry is it does say it's got I Split You Choose, which I gotta admit is one of our less favorite because it gives Jen so much analysis paralysis. But hey, it's Johnny Pack. I gotta give it a go. Then we've got Mesos. So I'm excited for this one because it's co-designed by Simone Luciani, who has been in my top 10 favorite board game designers forever. And he's teaming up with, a, he's doing this more and more, teaming up with other designers. This one's uh, uh, Yaniv uh, Kahana, Kahana, who he also teamed up with on Sea Dragons. And uh, Yaniv also did My Best Life, which I thought was a, a cool little uh, flipping right, not rolling right. Anyway, uh, anytime Simone Luciani's name is on the box, I gotta check it out. This one is about uh, Mesolithic tribes, you know, trying to, uh, you know, be successful in the ancient world or, you know, the, the pre, uh, you know, uh, uh, prehistoric times, and uh, yeah, I, I've got to check that one out when it becomes available. Uh, let's see, what next? Oh, Sinister Institute. Now, this one, I'm going to turn around, by the way, because i got to start heading back home so I can edit this. Uh, Sinister Institute, and man, oh, I've left Jen way behind there. Um, Sister Institute is the latest from Phil Walker Harding, praise be, which apparently is the thing you're supposed to say thanks to the Brothers Murph. Um, I Ro was saying it all the time. Why do you always say that? It's, oh, because the Brothers Murph do it. So, okay, I'm going to do it too. Phil Walker Harding, it's his latest sign. You don't know who he is. Man, one of the most prolific modern designers, and he almost always knocks out of the park. You know, Sushi Go... Baron Park. I mean, it's too long a list. But anyway, this is a cooperative game, not something you see um, from P Dub very often. And um, it's kind of a, you know, a wizarding school. Think very Hogwartsy type stuff, but um, not actual Harry Potter, just sort of inspired by. But yeah, a Phil Walker Harding um, fantasy adventure game that's cooperative. Yeah, I'll check that out. Okay, then. Oh, this is my last one. Wandering Galaxy. Now, designer Jerry Hawthorne, ever since he you know, exploded on the scene with Mice and Mystics a million years ago, he has produced amazing co-op after co-op. He's always pushing new and cool and interesting game uh, design ideas. I've always been a big fan, even when his designs don't quite work for me and Jen. I'm always glad I played them, so I always want to check them out. And this is the first time he's gone to space. Normally, he does anthropomorphized cute fantasy animals. There was, you know, that was kind of his where he got his start with Mice and Mystics, but this one... Uh, uh, looks like, oh, cute anthropomorphized animals and humans and aliens in space, in a spaceship, jumping from planet to planet, going on all kinds of cool, fun narrative missions. Uh, you know, hey, Jerry, I'm always interested to see what you've got up your sleeve next. And so uh, the box cover looks really, really cool. Can't wait to see more. Uh, yes, honey pie. Uh, Jen has found some pretty rocks, folks, and uh, we'll take a look at those as uh, we also get ready to go. There you go. That's a better idea because right there is the playlist. Yeah. Um, you and see sparkles? Look at that. Look at it sparkle, folks. And, look, and you got one more rock before we go, but you also got to click all that stuff over there. Oh, and uh, thanks to Natural Selection for supporting the show. Again, links for that down in the show notes. It will be crowdfunding soon. Thanks for watching. Ready to talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.